Hello students, looking at current affairs for 7th April, the news items picked up from the Hindi newspaper are these six, we'll look at them in detail. The first one, Modi seeks ministers' views on calibrated exit from lockdown. So after the interaction with chief ministers via video conference, Prime Minister Narendra Modi now sought suggestions from his council of ministers for a calibrated exit from the 21-day lockdown which was imposed on March 25. So it is expected to get over from on 14th April. So from 15th April there would be no lockdown but then it has been clarified that there will be a calibrated exit means the entire nation will not come out of lockdown at a one time it will be the states which are taking the decision now some states have already announced extension of the lockdown so this is there he also sought measures from his council of ministers to bolster domestic manufacturing because pandemic has brought home the fact that essential goods manufacturing within the country is essential because imports and exports are affected at this point of time he also raised concerns about uh, how harvesting and procuring of agricultural produce should be ensured so steps need to be taken, innovative steps need to be taken to ensure harvesting and procuring agricultural produce takes place smoothly. So the way we have cab aggregators in urban areas, it is being proposed that even tractor aggregators can be there, which can function for harvesting, procuring agricultural produce. Then also he calls, called Prime Minister called for preparing business continuity plans to address the economic situation too, once the containment ends. So here you have the key points in this uh, in this meeting of Council of Ministers. You can see. So promote make in India is what has been emphasized on. We called for macro level plans for harvest and procurement of farm produce, truck aggregation. So this is there. We also encouraged people to download the Arogya Setu app devised by the government to track and disperse information on COVID-19. Then next is MP lad suspended PM MPs to take 30% salary cut. So the union cabinet approved an ordinance to amend salaries, allowances and pensions of members of parliament act of 1954 calling for a 30% cut in the salaries of all MPs for the financial year 2020-21. Salary of MPs is around 1 lakh per month. There are other perks also which go along with it. That those would not be affected. Only to be a 30% cut in the salary. Also, the cabinet has approved a two-year suspension of the MP LAD scheme, that is MP Local Area Development Scheme for the next for the, these two financial years, 2020-21 and 21-22. And the amount saved will go to Consolidated Fund of India to fight COVID-19. So the MP LAD funds every year, which is provided to every member of parliament, is five crores a year. So the amount which would be saved over these two years comes to 7,900 crores. So opposition has raised concern regarding this that uh, from MPs when money is taken because MP lads fund is supposed to be spent in the constituency from which the MP has been elected. So it would have ensured money in the hands of the MPs in the constituency to work for the constituency to look at ground level scenario. But the MP lads fund has been scrapped. It would go into the consolidated fund of India to fight COVID-19 from central level. Also not just MP but also president, vice president and all governors are going to take a 30% salary cut. But the, they are going to take it as their own on their own volition, on their own will. Then next is, this is regarding how the number of districts with confirmed COVID-19 cases have increased from 62 on March 20 to 284 on April 6. The South Delhi district recorded the most cases, 320 cases. Then next is, Delhi is one alert after Tiger tests positive for COVID-19 in the US. So following a, let, following a letter from the Central Zoo Authority in New York confirming that a tiger has been tested positive for COVID-19, zoos in the country, the National Zoological Park in Delhi as well, have said they are on high alert now. And this is 17 lakh personal protective equipment have been procured from China to ease shortage. So the supply lines from abroad have been opened up and 1.7 lakh personal protection equipment, PPE, over coveralls, which are there, uh, have been donated from China. So domestic supplies of 20,000 coveralls. And already available in the country around 3,87,000 PPEs. So this is going to 
come to total of uh, 2.92 lakh PPE coveralls which will be arranged and supplied so far. So, yes, okay. Also, domestically produced N95 masks have been sent to various hospitals. DRDO, we had seen in news how it has developed N99 masks with further protection. This gives 95% protection, this gives 99% protection. So, that is there. Also, existing N95 mass producers have increased their capacity. Efforts are on to even mass produce uh, the development of DRDO. Too. Then next is Sudan finalizes deal to settle U.S.'s coal case. So, Sudan's justice ministry has said that it is finalizing a settlement with families of the victims of U.S.'s coal bombing. So, uh, Sudan has agreed to compensate the families. These families are American families, families of 17 American sailors who were killed in a suicide bombing targeting uh, the U.S. Navy destroyer in Yemen's Aden Harbor when it had uh, stopped for refueling. So, this was in 2000. So, this attack was later claimed by Al-Qaeda. But the U.S. court held Sudan responsible for the attack and ordered compensation, finding that the bombers were trained in the country. But in March 2019, U.S. Supreme Court overturned rule such a ruling. So there are lawsuits in Sudan going on against uh, uh, as such uh, lawsuits in US going on against Sudan. So uh, what has been sought is uh, permanently scrap these lawsuits. So there is a settlement uh, which has been discussed between Sudan and US and the settlement calls for compensation. So families would be compensated. So that is what Sudan has accepted. So this key condition being fulfilled by Sudan will help, will actually result in US removing it from the state sponsors of terrorism list. So Sudan presently is in the state sponsors of terrorism list of USA. It has been blacklisted since 1993 over, a, over the alleged support of Islamist groups. So this is the, and here you can see the detail of the USS coal bombing, which happened on October 12, 2000. Al-Qaeda suicide bombers drove a small boat filled with exclusives alongside the US Navy destroyer while it was refueling at a port in Yemen. The bomb made a 40-foot hole near the hull of the ship. 17 US soldiers were killed and 39 injured. So, US State Department and Yemeni government signed a document which set protocols in questioning witnesses and suspects. And it was Sudan which has been held responsible as we see. Then next is US gives terrorist label to white supremacist group. So, the Trump administration has designated an ultra-nationalist group based in Russia called Russian Imperial Movement as a terrorist organization. So, this is the first time that US government has applied the label to a white supremacist group. So, accordingly now, Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Assets Control will block any American property or asset belonging to the group. It will bar Americans from financial dealings with the group and also make it easier for, to ban its members from traveling to the US. So, the Russian imperial movement as such is not considered to be sponsored by Russian government, but it is said President Vladimir Putin has tolerated its activities which has helped it grow and it has also helped advance Russian government's external goals by recruiting Russian fighters to aid pro-Russia separatists in eastern Ukraine. Also, it has helped neo-Nazi groups in Scandinavia, in the Scandinavian countries of Europe. So, this is there. Now, it has been labeled as a terrorist organization by US. So that is it. These are the important news items. Thank you.